Hello everyone, Canon Lowy here, and I'm finally getting to the Canon chat for December of this of this year, 2020. And in the background footage, we have World of Warships, which I'm not sure if I've uh, actually used this for background footage for a Canon chat before. But World of Warships has a thing that I need to do before the end of the month, so here we go. So lately, it does seem that so many games want to do uh, do some kind of Christmas event, and which makes complete sense. You want to have really good engagement for the end of the year, and potentially spending that good old Christmas cash on your game and all that. But when you play multiple games, like I do. It does get overwhelming how many events happen at the same time. And that is a bit of a topic that I that I do want to cover in this canon chat is the prospect of daily missions and how that and how being involved in multiple games can can affect you, or at least affects me. So, for World of Warships, anyway, I'm actually playing this for a reason that it isn't technically an event. Um, they have something called Legendary Upgrades, which anyone who has played World of Warships for any reasonable amount of time, for any uh, decent amount of time, you will probably know of the... where is that communication? Let's turn that down a bit. Um, you'll know of the legendary upgrades for tier 10s. I mean, before they came out with the research bureau, which pretty much no one wanted, but they put into the game anyway, um, you do a set of missions to get a unique module for that tier 10 that changes the playstyle of that tier 10 by a little bit, depending on what it is. Uh, for the Des Moines here, it gives it a uh, faster acceleration, so you can be much more of... much more aggressive, I guess? Or at the very least, you can be at longer range as well, having more control uh, of your engine, if that makes any sense. And there is two ships that I need to do this for, the Zhao as well, and I'm on the final section of that, which is 40,000 base experience. So the Research Bureau was something that I personally really didn't like either it, when they announced it and put it into the game, it was one of the few YouTube videos that I've ever seen that I actually put a dislike on because it was just not necessary for the game and we pretty m most players anyway, we saw the writing on the wall and was like, oh they're gonna lock everything behind this system or at least a lot of things that shouldn't be behind that system, behind that system. And the unique upgrades was one of those features. So the Research Bureau is basically like a Call of Duty prestige system where you reset lines of your ships in order to get research p points. And while that doesn't sound that bad, if you have nothing better to do, I guess, um, on paper, the, the problem is, is that World of Warships is not Call of Duty, okay? You, you can't just get to level 50 within maybe a weekend or a week. You know, it takes a long time to grind these ships unless you have a lot of signal flags just lying around that... that will accelerate your progress. So I mean technically yes you can you can re research ships very quickly if you have a lot of those consumables available. But if you don't, well 
then it's going to take a really long time. So at first, the, the research bureau was basically where you reset your lines of ships, but then you gain unique ships for doing so, which I mean is fine, I mean whatever, make it an optional thing. But the problem was, is that they put legendary upgrades and I think they even mentioned that they wanted to put other things uh, behind it as well. But I don't really recall what that is. So there's that. Let me see if I can get this gearing. Very good. Um, and I'm still spotted by something. Okay, finally. So yeah, that, that is that is what ha is happening in World of Warships, so I'm doing that before the end of the year, before the unique upgrades are officially locked behind the research bureau that n pretty much no one asked for. <laughs> so with that, a, a lot of games, so, so on the topic of daily missions and everything, for keeping your players engaged, especially if they only play one game, which is it's completely fine. So you know, you do a, a, a simple thing every day, uh, spend maybe thirty minutes to an hour doing it, and then and I'm probably gonna get hammered here because, of course. Yep, there we go. Did set him on fire, though. Um, and it just seems like uh, if you have more than one of these games, and um, and you have daily missions that you have to do every day, or else you miss out on a significant things of the game. Like I'm talking about Genshin Impact. Um, this game, if I if you want the coal for premium ships, and then the other one is uh, the Sword Art Online Alicization Liquor, so also has daily missions on it, even though that it's completely single player. I mean, granted, the Sword Art Online one is only for cosmetics, so I mean, it's not really a big deal if you miss out on it. But um, for Genshin and stuff, that is how you get more characters or potentially different weapons that could be better for your character. So, you, so if you want to do well in that game, you kind of have to. Or at the very least, it is greatly beneficial. But when you have so many of those, or at least for me, when you have so many daily missions to do for these different games, it becomes really exhausting. Like, it just feels like as soon as I wake up, Okay, so, so for a, a bit of context, because of a medical situation, I am not currently working. And unfortunately this year it seems that a lot of other people have been in the same boat of not being able to work because of the, because of the pandemic and whatnot. So many of you can probably at least somewhat re relate to this, but I haven't been working so... I technically have a lot of time on my hands. But the thing is, is that with all of these daily missions, it honestly feels like a job to do them every day. Like the Genshin one, it well, especially if they have an event going on, it takes probably an hour to, a, to two, depending on what I'm doing. So there's that, and then the Sword Art Online one, takes probably about 30 minutes if I actually do it. Granted, I can actually stack up three different missions at any given time. So, I mean, I don't technically need to do them every day. 
which is kind of nice. And then, and then, and then we get we get to the games that I actually want to progress in, and then <laughs> it's time for supper, <laughs> and then. And then it's about time for me to go to bed. So it's just, it's it's just really, really quite a mess on that front. <laughs> so yeah, it's I mean it's it's really good if you're only playing one one or two games. But when you have three or four, <laughs> then it really seems to become like a job <laughs> just to keep up with all of this stuff now let's see if I can get this Moskva I kind of want to get closer to him before I fire I mean why not I mean everyone else is running away from him I'm trying to get some side shots get close enough to him, put in some side shots, get a few citadels, and then maybe take him out of the game. Because he is slowly reversing. Okay, 12 kilometers. I think it's about time that I fire. Now the problem with the Moskva is that it actually has armor, so... And I did not notice that Hindenburg there, so this may be an issue. So yeah, because there was an unspotted ship that kind of backfired on me. But I do want to get this Moskva out of the way. So I mean, I'm going to get hammered either way here, so... And I have no idea how those were ricochets, like... The Hindenburg was pretty much complete flat broadside when I shoot him, and then, and then I pen. Okay. One of the mechanics I really don't, <laughs> don't like in, in this game is that armor piercing is just so unreliable at times. You get full broadsides and somehow it ricochets. <laughs> and then when you are bow tanking, then you get hit by a bunch of pens and then it does 10k to you anyway. It's like, what is even the point? But yeah, getting on the topic at hand, yeah, so it... Wow, we actually won that one fairly easily then. And I got the second highest amount of XP too. I don't know how I managed that. I mean, I did do a lot of damage to the Moskva, but it didn't really seem like I was very influential. Just the gearing. So yeah, daily missions, like I said, it's really good when you are only playing one game so that you don't get tired of that said game. 
but when you're involved in multiple games that have that, it does get tiring very quickly. Uh, speaking of Genshin Impact, though, I did want to make an announcement, just not right away in the video, that I am not going to be covering any Genshin Impact gameplay in any of my videos anymore, because it came to my attention throughout uh, random videos online that apparently they have a massive security problem with their game. And, if any of you noticed, I did delete the only Genshin Impact video that I made, which was canon chat number 6. Uh, I still have the footage, so in the future, there is a slim possibility that I'll re-upload it, but I probably won't. So, the situation is, is that, apparently, you can get hacked simply by showing your user ID to people. And that is a big problem with videos and streaming because your user ID is straight in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. So unless you have an editing, uh, an editing software and are skilled in using it to block that, everyone gets to see your user ID and apparently that is enough for a hacker to get your account another thing is is that when you're doing co-op with random people they see your user ID if you allow them to join you or you join into their world so that has been a somewhat big concern of mine because I mean granted I don't really have significantly high amount of high rarity characters. I only have one five star for an example. The amount of time that I spent in the game is to the point that if I did get hacked, I probably would never touch the game again. Like that is just how much time I spent in the game. Um, and I did get quite far in the game without spending any money. So far, anyway. So that has been quite a thing, uh, in my opinion, <laughs> just to find that out. And because I did a video uh, showing Genshin Impact and my first impressions of it, well, I just decided to play it safe and, and delete it. And this is kind of unfortunate because I was recording a review of the game based on my point of view of being a free-to-play player in the game. Now, I was actually going to upload it if it was any good, which I didn't think it was my best work, so I was going to look at it and see if, uh, see if I could somehow uh, salvage it, but... At this point, I'm not even going to upload it. <laughs> so, that has just been very concerning to me. That just your user ID, which they plop right on your screen whenever you are playing, that that is enough to get you hacked if someone is willing to. Willing to put in the time and effort to do so. I think I'm radared by the Moskva. Probably. So with that being said, uh, if you were looking forward to more Genshin Impact gameplay from me anyway, um, I'm sorry, you're out of luck on that. <laughs> There's not really much I can do, and even if they do fix the security concerns, I don't know if, because of this, and how much money they made, um, they didn't... I mean, security is, is such a big thing uh, that, especially considering how much money you can spend on Genshin Impact, that I, I just kind of feel like from my point of view, it's almost to the point of that 
I wouldn't want to cover that game just based on that merit. Like, not necessarily... Uh, just because of the game itself. But that's just kind of kind of my thoughts on that. Another Moskva, because of course. Is there a lot of people playing Moskvas today? Okay, well, guess I just wasted a radar. Oh, there he is. Really lucky that I just didn't get deleted there. Because battleships, uh, of course, do that. Trying to get behind this island, but... Yeah, angling is just... So weird in this game. It feels like when you're angled, you're actually not. And when you are angled... It doesn't feel like you are at all. <laughs> Reasons! And of course, the Grosser Kerfurst is there, so I can't really make any plays on anything. And the Montana. Like, if the, if the battleship was by itself, I could potentially do something, but... But yeah, that, that, is, that is my thoughts on uh, Genshin Impact as of right now. Of course, I get citadeled by something. Pretty sure that was not the Moskva. Get out of here, Montana. Oh, he's right there. Of course he is. I see his secondaries. Yep, there he is. World of Warships is one of those games that if you get into a bad position, or you make a wrong move, you are just screwed. You can't back out of it. So... Yeah, of course. Oh, danger named Kenfar, dur dur dur. How funny. Yeah, like, I'm sure you did any better, buddy. Dark Dilbert. Yeah, you were dead before I was, so... If that says anything. Yeah, I did, I did make a wrong move there, but... I mean... <laughs> when half your team is dead and the whole enemy team is there, like, it, it does not matter. <laughs> in a team game like this. And personally, like, as, as good as cruisers are, I technically I don't actually like them as much because it seems like you are punished way more severely if you make a mistake. Like in a battleship you have much more armor and hit points to absorb that damage whereas 
in a cruiser one salvo from a battleship across the map or if you aren't paying attention can delete you so yeah so so that is my stance on Genshin Impact as of right now I, I do not plan on covering the game ever again well I might mention it in in one of these types of videos like if if I liked one of their updates or something then then there is a possibility of uh, me talking about that briefly but as of right now that is that is my stance on that game so is there any other news that I want to cover well Oh yeah, there. <clears throat> if any of you are interested in Arcanites, or if you have played Arcanites and just haven't been playing uh, lately, they have a really big event going on right now uh, called Dark Knights Men War, and supposedly the next one, uh, the next event after that, um, has the next limited operator that. Um, that is going to have uh, their banner. So if you've been taking a break from the game, possibly with Genshin Impact, then perhaps you could get into the game again. And of course, Arknights being mostly an AFK game, I would say, or at least for farming materials and whatnot, um, doing the dailies on that is honestly not really an issue at all. Like. You just press a few buttons and then <laughs> you let it go. It's uh, it's beating the new stages that where the strategy comes in. So I've been I've been enjoying that. Uh, they added the new mechanic of if you attack certain enemies, they will anger or. Yeah, yeah, let's just just go with that. They'll anger other enemies and they will go towards uh towards your units before possibly you are ready. So that is something that at least for right now it's somewhat new. So there is that. And then for the New Year anniversary for Arknights Global, they'll have uh, have that limited operator, like I said, W. And then they will have um, have chapter the next chapter of the story. And of course, I don't have high explosive loaded, so. see how that does of course it misses fantastic how typical but I did do 12k in one salvo that's not bad Petro Pablos honestly I should probably get a Petro Pablos because it sounds like that's just a better version of the Moscow and the Moscow is well, as we have seen, is pretty incredible against other cruisers. Well, actually, battleships as well. It's basically the most tanky cruiser in the entire game. And, ironically, that actually is more tanky than some battleships are in this game. <laughs> Is a Shimakaze right there. Yeah, like look look at our team locations. We're just kind of all over the map. Like none of our 
ships are really in the position to support each other and, and that's what I'm talking about for if you make a mistake in this game you will you can't just back out of it and like in World of Tanks if you go broadside on and you get tracked well then you have a repair kit and you can pull back well in this game if you get caught out you're just done it <laughs> it does not matter <laughs> And at the moment, I'm in a position where I don't really know where what I'm supposed to where I'm supposed to go. Oh, there's a gearing right there. I would love to chow on one of those again. So yeah, I think that's pretty much it for this cannon chat. I mean, nothing super incredible uh, to announce. Um, besides <laughs> besides the fact that I did a Genshin Impact review except I'm not gonna upload it him pretty good so this was pretty risky come on engine engine nope if if I was in the if I was in the Des Moines with the legendary mod, that would have not been a problem. Oh yeah, it hurts that you just cut your engine just at the right moment where you get all of the torpedoes, but we got one of, arguably, one of the most dangerous ships taken out. I think that's, that's worth it. I'll take it. I'll take it over the Des Moines, that last Des Moines game any day. trash game. I mean, it's really ironic though in these team games where people complain to you about how bad you're doing uh, right the moment that you make your biggest, like, like you get destroyed and then you notice that they've been dead since like a few minutes ago and half your team is gone so it doesn't even matter what you do anymore. Isn't that just the beauty of multi multiplayer games? But yeah, so the missions I have twenty two thousand for that, and then as soon as that game is done, I'll probably have like another fifteen hundred for that. Isn't great, but I mean that that's kind of the thing, is that I was I wasn't really I wasn't really playing these tier ten cruisers all that much 
until they announced that the whole uh, the whole research bureau moving the unique upgrades to the re research bureau because that kind of finally got me moving on that even though that I didn't want to uh, where's the equipment And also, I did get the unique upgrade for the Yamato, but I'm not <laughs> even using it because I was going to use the range mod for my review of World Warships just for some hilariousness. Um, because for the ship, if you go full range mod and you go with the spy plane, you can get a range to 37 kilometers. So that's pretty hilarious, but I mean, you're not going to hit anything at that range, but you know, hey, why not? So there's that. And, uh, yeah, I think that was pretty much everything I wanted to cover is that it's just that there's so many events going on right now and so many things going on that, uh, that it really doesn't feel like I get time to do what I actually want in these games. Like, for an example, the store online, Alicization Licorice, I was going to watch, like, all of the character cutscenes before I actually went and defeated the final boss, and I still have not done yet, done that yet, uh, because a lot of these cutscenes are actually decently long, and... And whatnot, but I just haven't done anything like for that for such a long time. And for Genshin Impact, I haven't actually done anything really with the main story for that game for quite a while because, like, by the time I get my daily done, it's like, well, I don't want to play Genshin Impact uh, any longer. Uh, I've spent my time already playing that game. I want to do something else. Uh, and then Path of Exile. Oh yeah, I, I guess I completely forgot to mention anything about Path of Exile. Uh, Path of Exile has been doing those race events, and I was thinking about making just a general video of my thoughts on races in general. Um, not sure if I'm actually going to do that or not, but... But, um... Oh. Yeah, 1700. Was that, um... was that these races are are fun but not fun at the same time like they're decent ideas for a little bit of fun but you have to be really good at the game in my opinion or really lucky i guess in some regard to actually do well in them the first mayhem event if if you weren't skilled in the game you you just nah <laughs> not gonna happen that was insanity and then the second one was Endless Delving, but you're completely reliant on what the game gives you for gear, because it was solo self-found. And I really don't like that because of how much RNG is in the item drops. Like, getting good gear from drops alone in Path of Exile is, especially for later parts in the game, is pretty much impossible unless you are incredibly lucky. At some point, if you want specific mods on certain items, especially influence-related ones, you're going to have to spend currency and craft them yourself, or just buy said item from someone else. So that event, while being in the delving part of the game, which in my opinion is kind of my favorite part of Path of Exile, Doing that all the time while also not being able to play with Warmonger because it's solo and having terrible gear for most of it and also I was playing uh, a Bladefall Blade Blast build which in my mind just isn't really suited for that. It's kind of like physical versions of mines and it just, I don't know, it, it felt like it was good at if I had high enough cast speed, but I didn't while doing that, so it just felt 
didn't feel right. Um, so I guess I'm kind of glad that I did that rather than playing a whole league of said character because I don't I think that I probably would have been tired of it pretty quickly. But yeah, well, 1,000, I guess, XP for that. So overall, the races, I think they're fine for experienced players, but if you aren't experienced in the game, then I think they were just not good. <laughs> so, I don't know. That's kind of like a little bit of my thoughts on that. So, yeah, just so many things happening in December and then and then since we were doing the racing events and whatnot we have uh, me and Warmonger haven't been recording any more heist and and whatnot so I don't know when we're gonna continue that probably well I, I'm I guess I can't really say say any speculation on that um, and January is coming very quickly, so if you're looking forward to Alien Isolation, that is starting uh, on January 1st uh, for the horror game special. So hopefully that game will be better, or at least more suited to my liking, than Resident Evil 1 Remake was. Uh, Resident Evil 1 Remake was such a mixed bag on so many different things that... I really loved parts of it, but then there were a lot of other parts that just really annoyed me. So, that's kind of what I got. And I know that during these canon chat videos, like, I tend to say that a lot because since I don't really write a list of any topics that I want to cover, or a script for that matter, I don't script any of my videos because I kind of feel like that... Well, especially during game series, I come up with stuff as I go based on what's happening in the game. So, writing a script for stuff like that, I just didn't really like to think of the thought of that. And I wrote an outline of what I wanted to cover in Gensh the Genshin Impact review, and it still turned out not very good, in my opinion. So, honestly... I think unscripted, I do a lot better, ironically. And if I were to start using scripts of what I want to talk about on various things, I would have to have a lot of practice in it for it to actually be good. So, there is that, I guess. So, with that, thank you very much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed the World of Warships gameplay, whether... Uh, my failures or just the chat blaming everyone else for what they're doing and have a wonderful day